All right, so I've been threatening to do a video of the solar system here, so we're almost done for the year, so I guess it's now or never. So that's the setup. Those four bottom um, panels were what we originally had on the west side, and then we put those four more black ones up there. The bottom ones are like 240 or 250 each, and the top ones are, I don't know, I want to say 260 or, I can't remember. I'll, I'll put notes in here and you can figure that out. But anyway, so those panels are uh, in series parallel. So the uh, top four are one series circuit and the bottom four are another series circuit. Hold on. So those two circuits come down here and then they go into this real piece of cheap Chinese stuff. And it looks like it's circuit breakers, but it's not. It's actually fuses. It's just got a fuse in there. But anyway, so I've got room to put in two more, uh, two more strings of panels. And they use the MC4 connectors, which is kind of nice. So then it leaves here, goes underground. So the solar comes in here and goes into my midnight solar. I think it's a 150 or a 200. I used to have the screen on it, but I got a remote cable, so everything's in the house now. So this thing um, basically is an MPPT for the solar panels. Then I've got a breaker box here. I've got that this big breaker here, which is for all the batteries, and a smaller breaker at the bottom for when there's solar panels. Uh, the output of the uh, of the MPPT comes in, and then there's another breaker on the midnight. So there's the breakers all over the place. And then I also bought the uh, Whizbang Junior, which is basically a shunt that only works with uh, midnight solar stuff. So that's the first shunt there, and then all the juice. From all these, uh, from those solar panels coming through here, it goes into the panel, and then it goes into here where we have the batteries. And I've got, uh, I've had three Battleborns, but I've had two Battleborns die on me, so I'll have to figure out what's going on. But anyway, the Battleborns, they were very expensive. I'll put the prices in so you can see what's going on. These ones are Alberta Lithiums, and these ones are uh, just Amazon. And there's uh, generally, there's supposed to be 10 batteries here, but right now there's only eight. Uh, functionally, all the batteries seem to work the same. I was having some balancing issues with the Battleborns. It turned out it was just a bad battery, but uh, I got some balancers anyway. So I think as time goes on and things get, uh, you know, old and worn out, it'll, it'll help to keep them in balance. Initially, everything was 12 volt, and then I converted it to 24. So that's the batteries. So this is my Magnusine inverter charger. It's a 3,000 watt or 4,000 watt, 24 volt. Um, so the batteries feed this thing, and it also has a built-in charger. It can charge the batteries at about 80 amp when shore power is on. So that's basically my inverter charger. This is my old one here. It was a 12 volt one. It was an Ames one. It blew some capacitors out, but it still sort of worked. The charger didn't work very good on it. So what I had was this thing here, like an external uh, 100 amp 12 volt charger, which still works really good. Off the magnet sign, I've got this uh, auto generator start, which I can never get to work. But uh, <coughs> the idea is that if you had a two wire start on your, uh, on your generator you could get the generator to start with this uh it kind of sort of worked but uh i had issues with the generator which i'll talk about later another thing i got from magnum is their mag web so basically when the internet's running up here i can monitor what's happening uh within the inverter charger itself i also have the my midnight thing so the midnight uh, mppt is on is on the internet as well and it provides a lot more information i wouldn't wreck there's nothing of value that this thing tells you uh, but anyway, at least you know it's there and everything runs into this little hub or switch and then I've got a little wireless connection that goes back into the cabin so pulling out that's the whole 
that's the whole setup there. The one last thing is there's another shunt here for the uh, Victron. They have their own little, little battery monitoring system and it's cool because you can measure the battery voltage but also the uh, the delta voltage so in other words the top voltage to the middle voltage at the bottom to see if your batteries are getting out of uh, out of balance and it'll set off an alarm and let you know so that's how i knew things were kind of funky with the battleborns but it turned out that one battleborn battery was just open it didn't work at all so in the summertime, mostly the solar charges it up, but uh, it's October, it's November here now. So uh, I've got a, a transfer switch here so I can run everything on solar. Or if I want to work on the system here, I can have the generator running and then flip everything over a generator and work on the whole solar system. So I'll show you the generator. So this is the original generator. Well, not the original, but the, one of the latest ones we had. It's an inverter when it's the EU3000IS from Honda. Works good. We put the uh, Gen Start remote start on it and the two wire start. So with, uh, with that connector down there, that two wire start from up at uh, at the uh, at the shed would uh, would start this thing up. And uh, with this Gen Start system, you have to take it apart and put a servo from a model airplane in there to run the choke. And we always, you know, we go through two servos a, a summer. There's no trim control on it, so if it gets out of whack, it uh, it just doesn't work right, so uh, we sort of gave up on that. This is the new generator I got. It was from Price Club or Crossco. It's a high power 35, 38, 35 on gas. Um, I think it was $1,100. Um, it puts out 40% more power than the Honda. It was about, you know, 60% cheaper. I think uh, I did the math. If you included the Gen Start system and all that stuff, you could get three of these generators for one of those generators. And this one comes with a remote, uh, two remotes, and it will work on propane. And it's been working really well for us. I've had it all summer. It's got 331 carefree hours on it. Just changing the oil. Very, very good generator. This is a remote panel from the Midnight Solar. So right now it's like a one o'clock in the afternoon, November 1st. So we're getting 800 watts of power out of the panels. Hundred and fifteen volts. And this is basically 13 amps is going into the batteries. The rest is going into keeping the cabin going. Uh, state of charge is 40%. This thing works really well. So this is the Victron thing. That, that works off the shunt that's inside the uh, the uh, Midnight Solar uh, breaker panel there. So this is the Victron Energy uh, battery monitor that uses that shunt that's on the side of the battery. So the top battery is 13.3 volts, bottom battery is 13.3 volts, and the delta is nothing. So that's, that's decent. The batteries are all balanced. Uh, battery voltage right now. Um, number of amps going into the batteries, watts going into the batteries, uh, where I sit, for, uh, so I'm 172 amp hours in the hole from my theoretical 500. Um, batteries are at 57%. That's it. And then finally, this is the uh, this is the remote for the Magnum. Um, it doesn't tell you very much, but it's good because you can use it to uh, when the two wires working, you can use it to start and stop the generator. But what do we, we have the remote control? just down here, so I can just hit the remote here. And that iPower generator will start up and you'll see it wait about 60 seconds before it starts. And then uh, what we can do is we can, if, it, if there's a, uh, we can turn the charger on and off. So if we're really hitting it hard, we can turn the charger on and off. Um, we can turn the inverter on and off. So right now it's just waiting. It waits a little bit. So right now we're, we're down 19 amps. But what will happen is once the generator comes online, we'll see how many amps are going in. So I'll hold on. Okay, so the uh, Magnum is just letting the uh, generator start charging. You'll hear the generator cranking up in amps. And the beauty of this setup is you can change how much power you want. So setup, if I go to charger setup, I can control. So I'm at 80%. If I've got like a little small generator, I can settle at 10% and it'll take a lot longer to charge, but it will still work. So now we're putting in 42 amps. And if you look up here, you'll see that it's close to 100 amps.
between the uh, solar panels and the generator. So generally don't run the generator during the day, let the solar panels do as much as they can. And then uh, we'll top it up at night with the generator. Let's kill it. And there you go, we're back to nothing.